Hey friends, in today's video, I'm going to break down my optimized Rat King setup in a team setting. I know you already see it in the background. You see Omniocalus and you're rolling your eyes saying, Cam, how did you just figure this out? I didn't. I've been using this for a while, but most of the competitive players on console came to this conclusion as soon as Omniocalus came out. And this has pretty much been a standard at high level play ever since. What I do like about this is each top player has a very slightly different setup. Whereas if you compare this to Void Titans, almost all of them are copy-paste exactly the same. The Hunter stat splits are all slightly different, and the Fragment choice, and sometimes even the aspect where they go Stylish Executioner with a Weakened Nade or using Suppressor like I do. Of course, now Scatter Grenades are all the rage, and they probably run Weakened Scatter Grenades. Sometimes it's Marksman Dodge, sometimes it's not. Most of the time I will say it's Strafe Jump, and then even the Supers are all different between these Hunters. It's very rare in Destiny for something not to be an illusion of choice. I don't think the devs have done a really good job of making a lot of strong options that vie against each other to be used. It's mostly just a couple outliers that never really get tweaked, and all the competitive players figure out the real meta, and without even talking to each other, we'll all pretty much end up on the same thing. Take these Titan stat splits, for instance. If I could have it my way, I would have exactly one more point of mobility, but I have almost perfect armor, and that's a luxury not a lot of competitive players do. I would say this would be more like 25 mobility, maybe even 18 mobility, and that's good enough for them. The static thing is 10 resilience, 10 recovery, and very, very high intellect. Sometimes they go a little bit lower intellect and a little higher discipline, but this is pretty much exactly what they shoot for. A target lock SMG. Cloud Strike because it's very high handling and has the team kill potential. And a Grenade Launcher because it's the most efficient pull off of the wall and can even one hit other players so it's three kills per pull instead of a rocket being most of the time one if you're lucky. The Fragments are always controlled demolition because Scatter Grenades are the best bang for your buck and if you have three Void Titans they all leech the ability to heal each other anytime a nade or a shield bash hits them. Shield bash is the obvious choice over shield throw because it suppresses and it's a movement tool. And then Towering Barricade is much better than Rally because you don't risk getting sniped. Bubble is better than Sentinel Shield because of raw cooldown and the fact that it for free drops orbs to your teammates. In a triple bubble setup, maybe it would be worth one going a Sentinel Shield. So if I ever do that, I might have to play it. The fragments are typically the same. They do whatever they have to do to reach those extra stat splits. And in this case, I took Devour. Not every top player does that. Sometimes they just go for raw stats or some way to make the scatter grenade deadlier with weaken or extra explosions. And that's about all the variation that you would get on a Titan. And so this is what I have to make sure that the Rat King team composition can handle. And not just the bubbles, the entire game. It might be a front-loaded setup, but it will get the job done. So here is why I came to all these conclusions on what I run for stat splits. 10 mobility to have the fastest dodge and fastest strafe possible so I can keep up with peacekeepers. Sidearms in general have a smaller penalty to aim down sights, which means effectively you move faster. 7 resilience is extremely meta against a lot of popular options and some fringe but frequent enough options like the disruption break bow. I sat here for 3 hours shooting people in a private match and came to the conclusion that since you have to go 6 to... A dodge thorns perk thorns two head one body you might as well just bump it up to seven and cover everything or if you're lucky with good armor you can just swap out a recub mod to a resilience mod whenever one of those fringe options come up keep in mind that if you're invisible at all a disruption break wave frame like this explosive personality will not break your shield therefore disruption break will not proc and all you have to do is have, I think it's about three resilience to make that happen. So the lowest I would ever go is three resilience. The highest I'm ever going to go is seven. And if I really, really wanted to go higher, I would put on this font of endurance. So when I pick up an orb, it moves to 10, which can help me fight target lock SMGs. Of course, at base, Rat King has a 0.6 time to kill. But if the Titan puts up a Bastion overshield, I have to shoot an extra bullet. What makes Rat King exotic is that if other teammates using the sidearm stand beside me, 
the TTK ramps up significantly. I don't remember exactly what it is, but we're essentially equalizing with the target lock SMGs while they have an overshield, especially if we're in Omniocalus and they get first shot, they're going to almost always have to put an extra bullet as long as you hit that threshold of three resilience. So that's why these top two stats are the way it is. Recovery is the dump stat. I'll just put anything extra. I maybe get there. It's the last one I care about because Rat King, get a kill reload, I get all my recovery. Then we have the Devour Fragment, pick up an orb, I get a chunk of health that was recently nerfed. So to fix this, I put Recuperation on the boots so I have almost full health when I pick up an orb, get a little bit of melee energy, and then get some extra damage boost on the Rat King to again make sure I am never trading out with an SMG and I'm just outright beating them. For the chest piece, I went double unflinching. I normally go triple, but in this case, I'm running slightly higher resilience than normal, so I can get by with two because it does have diminishing returns. And I'll put the third one on arc since I am using a slug shotgun and I have a toolbox of options here for the correct map and to try to meta call against certain teams. The next stat is intellect. Depending on what my teammates bring to the table, I'm either going to have nine strength or nine intellect. Six strength is perfectly okay because I can refund my smoke completely with a gambler's dodge. But that doesn't always happen. You don't have the luxury to do that against good opponents. So I still have six so that I can passively get my smoke anyway. And you might be saying, well, if you're playing perfectly with Omnioculus, you never have to refresh your smoke. And that's just not how the game is played. It doesn't play in a vacuum like that. You make mistakes. There are certain timings your teammates have to meet. And so you're not just huddled together in a pack waiting to have someone throw a scatter grenade at you and end your whole career. So the two teammates I'm going to play with is this build right here. The Surtarachnid with Rat King and then whatever they really want to bring to the table. The important thing here is 10 Discipline with the Widow Silk so that you can set grapple points so that you can leech off of them. So it's like you have a total of four charges between you. If anybody uses a grapple, it saves on them. You can also do a half grapple by double tapping it, which just leaves the grapple point and only costs half of your grenade charge. It also reloads your weapon. So if you're using a grenade launcher, you can sort of double shot it. Uh, when you have one mail, kills create a tangle. You can grapple to your tangle, which saves your grapple, pick it up, throw it, and then grapple onto your tangle again to have movement, which will put you in prime position to be able to utilize Rat King and make up for the fact that you might be running a sidearm and a shotgun like I am. If you have juiced armor, you can go threat a warding. So you pick up an orb and you get your unflinching. You get woven mail, which makes body shots hit less damage, which is very useful against fusion rifles and shotguns. And then of course, a stat burr. In a team environment trials type gameplay, I might substitute two discipline for two intellect, or I would take some hits on fragments to try to get slightly higher intellect. Since uh, Fragment, Threat of Ascent, gives you a handling bonus, it's really nice to have kinetic dexterity, so you can do these swap combos with a grenade launcher, a sniper rifle, to a Rat King cleanup. Then you can Marksman's Dodge, it reloads Rat King, you go invisible, and you drop a clone. And that can be very, very helpful because it's kind of like dropping a smoke grenade. It pings the enemy's radar, and you're simultaneously going invisible, so then you're getting off the radar. It allows for so much playmaking potential, especially when in the blink of an eye, you can just grapple out, drop a clone, pick up a kill, go invisible, and the enemy team has no idea what's going on because they don't even know how you got there so fast. And so to assist with the grapplers doing their strand things, Omnioculus makes them invisible mid grapple. They set up, they drop clones. I go invisible. We talk to each other as a team about where we want to go, what we want to do with our invis. We watch the kill feed. Whoever's name picks up a Rat King kill, they're about to go invisible. And then as a team, we can decide what to do with that invisibility immediately. Try to fake out the enemy team. And so that's the whole concept here. It's trying to beat the Void Titans at their own game before they even get bubbles. With 9 intellect and a deadfall tether, there is a good chance we close out a game before a bubble's even in play. And worst case, the bubble drops, we just have to concede that's just something we're not going to do. It's a disadvantage. But at the end of the day, we can still break it with Rat King if we really had to. It's just unlikely that a good team is going to let us get away with that. So here are my toolbox of weapons. I think Ganora's Axe makes the most sense because this is going to become very, very popular. Even if it's uh, already popular, it's going to be even more than that. 
So this is a meta call where threat detector helps me suss out invis. Uh, for example, let's say there's a smoke on the floor, a clone around the corner, and a real player. All three different sides of me. What threat detector will help me do is if I'm near the clone and smoke but not near the player, it's going to be zero stacks of threat detector. But as soon as the player steps a little bit closer, then I know for sure which of the red pings is the real player, so I can suss them out. Also, invis players, if they're trying to close the gap on me, I know exactly where they're going to be based on sound cues and when threat detector hits based on the map. It's an acquired skill and something you can VOD review to pick up on it, but this is why I'm settling with this role. I really do think it's the best for future play. It's just a skill that I'm going to have to keep getting better and better and faster at. The other half of this is, of course, Skulking Wolf, where I'm using Omnioculus damage resistance with seven, just like the old Lord of Wolves meta, to close the gap and then just hit them once. And if they have a target lock SMG and they have to use one more bullet than usual, they're hitting 8.75 TTK. So that might be just one slide for me. Take them out. Now I proc Skulking Wolf. Now the Overshield Fragment goes off. If I proc Reaper, it drops an orb. Or if I dodge during the kill, powerful attraction procs because of the network, and I get Devour for free, I get another three tiers of recovery. The recuperation kicks in. I go back to full health. The next weapon is the Wise and Rebuke, and I am surprised I put 250 kills on this already for an, a one-off video, but it ends up being a really good call on console. While I don't have a perfect role on this telescope sniper, it's good enough, and it gets the job done. It can snipe wells. I'm not sure if this Azume can snipe wells with high impact reserves. Maybe I have to go back up mag. I'm not 100% sure. But regardless, I'm just going to keep it in my inventory. I'll test it another day. This is an unobtainable role. Bungie, stop doing that. Next up is the Macabre for similar reasons. High impact reserves to have a better cleanup with Rat King, where maybe I use one bullet less. Matador, tried and true. Y'all know why you'd use this. One of the most consistent shotguns. Oh, also, by the way, Woven Mail and Omnioculus stack. So if I give Omni to my Woven Mail teammates and a Matador slides at them, they're just going to eat it for breakfast. Same with the Fusion Rifle. Like, it just does not care. Next up is the Explosive Personality. This is probably the easiest way to use this. So definitely use it so it gets nerfed. I don't like the strength of GLs in the game. This is not the exact role I would use. I just put it in here so I'd remember to mention it. It's craftable. You go Envious, Disruption Break, Proxy Nades, and High Blast Radius. Then finally, these are my primary weapons. I'm hunting for a Horror's Least with Kill Clip. But for now, I have Focus Fury, and that's okay. It's not realistic to proc this when I'm on a Rat King team, so I really am looking for an upgrade, but I do think this is the best Pulse Rifle for the energy slot. Finally, again, I don't have a perfect bow roll, but this has Swashbuckler. You can do this interesting combo where you jump at your opponent, hit him in the head, and then you slam down with your uh, Trapper's Ambush. It's an air move, too. And it procs Swashbuckler. Even better, you can switch this out for Heavy Handed and make an Orb of Light on that same kill, which kickstarts your Devour, and you run around with a one-hit bow. I think this is going to be my pick for very long-range maps. This is going to be my mediums. And then the Special Weapon Buffet for any close-range map like Endless Veil. I forgot to mention Galu, which has the Overflow perk. I was playing Checkmate and came to the realization that this perk doesn't work there. And I had to manually reload my gun, which is disgusting. And so we're not on speaking terms right now. So I loaded up Endless Veil really quick to just show you that air move is very useful for scouting out the opponents. Shatter Dive's the best for it, but you can always do that third person peek. You can use it as an air move where you jump with your special weapon. You see that there's three red scopes looking at you and you just slam it back down. I have my melee vines set up, so if I right bumper, it's just a regular melee. But if I hit my paddle plus the right bumper at the same time, it just drops the smoke. And so you want to be very crafty about your smoke a placement to where it catches your opponent. Or you want to be Giga Brain and purposely place a obvious smoke like this. Where if they're at this POV, they see it's a smoke. And so what you can do is you can stand right here and they'll be like, oh, that's a smoke. I'm not dumb. And then they'll walk right into the smoke and you're like, haha, it was a person. That's what really makes this class fun, is you can go Galaxy Brain 6D chest, and not just on an individual level, on a team level. There's so many layers to this setup. By the way, I'm not saying this is balanced, and I like where it's balanced relative power level-wise, 
but compared to what most other teams use, this just, it fires the neurons right for me on a team strategy level. Putting up a barricade and playing sniper network connection jousting is not really my cup of tea. And so anything to be able to play differently, albeit maybe slightly worse at first, this is going to take a lot, a lot, a lot of practice and team coordination and VOD reviews. So that's what excites me. Maybe if I play great, I can be slightly better than a team of Void Titans. That's the goal. And if I lose to them, there's not really going to be an excuse because I find this powerful and fun. Still don't think it's balanced though relative wise and could see all of this taking a very deserved hit. Anyway, enjoy the game. Psych, I forgot to show off the uh, half grapple. So let my abilities recharge really quick because it's mayhem. You see how it left a grapple point and only used half of my grapple? Well, I can use that. My teammates can use that. Next part is this rope dart is broken. It's essentially a throwable arc bolt. And then the clone drags aim assist from the opponents. You can use it as a pseudo barricade, a radar ping, a bomb. And it also connects off of the rope dart. So if you know your opponents have line of sight on it, you go into cover, you throw your rope dart, and it might like arc bolt onto the opponent. So it's a nice way to get chip damage when somebody slides on your clone, expecting it to be a player. So you open with the rope dart, then you just slide with your special weapon, clean it up. The super is also very, very good. A lot of people don't give it credit because it it's not obvious to use. The thing I wanted to uh, bring up is the half grapple. Either double tap or you can also uh, hit your ghost twice. So, like that. Now enjoy the gameplay. Snipe a Fidian. He's on straight binder. How do we want to route this? Mm. It? Every time? Probably, I, I assume, right? I'll, I'll do first grapple if you want to leech off of that. Yep. Don't invis it. You have to not. invis us when we get in. Drop you can invis us. Five leave. I'm going right. I'm going right. I have a flank. One week. Got the warlock. We have primaries. Oh, Go. my bad. I didn't even know, yeah, I didn't oh, even know that someone was coming. ACDC is good. Just gonna kill. Reses, reses. Nice. Well done. I died to meleeing that guy. He has feedback on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta respect it. I love dying to that exotic. It doesn't. It doesn't make me mad. Like some other. No, I'm gonna lurk mid. One? I'm gonna lurk mid. Yeah, I have one. Okay. God, do you want me to make? Okay. I'm about to drop down too. But you ready? Meleeed. This is very degenerate, dude. <laughs> like. <laughs> our, our, our entire close range is covered by the clone as well. They can't do anything about it. Yeah. The Threadlings are just, is just like icing on top of the cake, dude. That's not yeah. even part of the build. It's just... Yeah. I don't know, I don't I'm know lurking mid again. Copy that. Yep. Dropping down now. I won. I'm gaining health, gaining health. We're all together. Let me go, let me go mid. I got the cutoff. Yeah, I turned racking into that. Let's go. I had, had racking work. Yeah. Dude, this is crazy, dude. <laughs> this is so strong. Oh my god. Dude, I'm so excited for this, man. This is it. I've grappled. Peak degeneracy. I'm gonna go to elbow. Heavy, heavy, heavy. I'm dead, my bad. Everything's keeping them off. One's 80. The guy with the other ward is 80. You can double back. I can't remember. You can double back it if you want. Nice, nice. dude. Shit. Dude, I feel like I don't even need to use a sniper though. Like, I should just put it on if I need it. Like, we're just diving, man. That's why I put on the slug. Yeah, I, I think I might just put on a slug. I'm pointing into mid. 
I think they're all hit. All, t all of them hit. All of them hit. Okay, I'm gonna drop a Don't suppressor when they peek me. One shot, one shot. I'm putting another point down. Half! My axe half. Looking, looking. Back up, can't or, uh, I got you. I'm beating, I'm beating. Just give him perk. He's gotta reload. You can go, you can go. I very, very strong first game. Each other, like, I love the thought that when we're near each other, we don't even have to, like... Help. We don't have to be fighting together to give each other, like, the, the TTK that can compete with the SMG. Just like, that's... Like, I'm just gonna sit here so you can now be the SMG.